this, believe it or not, is a microphone and possibly the most realistic microphone in the world. Meet Dave. A Neumann KU100 and at roughly $10,000 it's not a cheap mic. Now, why did I hire this mic in? Well, I met this gentleman called Martin Green, who's in the band Lau. If you haven't checked them out, linked down below. And he'd made this just, I don't know, incredibly affectionate podcast about lockdown. And there was just this one moment in it where I felt the tenderness between a father and a child, not just because of what was being said, but because I felt I was in their house. I could feel the warmth of home and hearth. And I've been trying to kind of work on my Christmas present to this community. My family piano has gone slightly out of tune because of lockdown. And I really wanted to recreate that sense of being at home, a family grand. And it immediately struck me that maybe if I were to get this KU100 or Dave in, I could recreate what I enjoy when I sit at this piano at home. So what makes Dave or the KU100 so special? A dummy head that's as heavy as a head with two omnidirectional mics placed in curiously realistic is. Well, it's quite a unique mic because it's binaural. Uh, left and right, left and right speakers, stereo. Same thing? Well, it turns out not. Definitely not. You see, binaural is not just about the way you record something, it's also about the way you reproduce it. Binaural is a theory of recreating what it is to hear with two ears not to reproduce with two speakers. This is a stereoscopic recording, and I may be making this up, but I suspect it was developed as a means of representing what a concert would sound like in your room. Proscenium arch-like, left and right. Your microphones positioned in a way that is then replicated by your speakers. Binaural, on the other hand, is a recording technique that imitates more accurately how the ears behave. Immerses you in the scene, it doesn't put you in the audience. I think one of the good ways of demonstrating the differences between stereo and binaural is the use of double basses in the orchestra. Now, we've switched to stereo, but we haven't moved the basses into the middle. I mean, some people record things antiphonally, as I believe it's, it's called, but by and large, they're over on the right. Now, this is because we still continue to record the rooms, and the room reflections will be picking up the basses in the left speaker. But more importantly, my left ear will still be able to hear what's coming out of the right speaker as well as the left and herein lies the main difference. Now there are ways of imitating binaural recordings by bringing say these two microphones together to seven inches which is the average width of people's heads not mine I've got a massive one and uh, pointing them away from each other so imitating the ears. Interaural time differences. As I demonstrated in the video above, us playing a drum in a tunnel, sound travels very slowly. And believe it or not, the distance between the ears is a way in which the brain can pinpoint where sounds are. So you can create a binaural recording by bringing two microphones seven inches apart, pointing them in opposite directions. Wrong. This isn't a true binaural recording. You'll get a degree of spatiality but you won't get the very special thing created by the gap in between the two microphones. The sonic shadow that your head casts. I love that idea of a, a head shadow. Now, what do I mean by that? We are really sensitive to very minute adjustment in familiar sounds. So I think we've all been familiar with how strangely unintelligible people become when they put one of these on. And I guess it's the same if I just hold my hand here. You can really hear a, a subtle difference. So this large expanse of bone and mush, your nose, the intricate shape of your ears, all help your brain to be able to work out where stuff is, not just in this direction, but in this direction, that direction, 
and that direction. Now I was going to conduct one of my very unscientific experiments, a stereo recording versus a binaural recording. But to be honest, the minute I played the audio back, I realised the difference is not subtle at all. In fact, the binaural recording is pretty astounding. Now, I'm going to put both WAVs in the links down below, but I'm just going to run the binaural recording, warts and alls, outtakes, with all of us walking around for you to experience what I've just experienced. Now, to do this, I would recommend putting on a pair of headphones, sitting in a quiet room, and maybe closing your eyes. Now, we'll use my voice, the human voice, which is the thing that we're most tuned into hearing, but also, here's another one of my cod theories, I believe that we're really tuned into hearing fresh water flowing and our ability to locate that. So I have a jug and a bowl. Well, I need the toilet. Oh, and make sure your, your left is left and your right is right. Okay, let's go in. I'm holding a jug of water in one hand and a bowl in the other. I'm going to pour the contents of the jug into the bowl. Okay. Yeah. I'm holding a jug of water in one hand and a bowl in the other. I'm going to pour the contents of the jug into the bowl. Left front. I'm holding a jug of water in one hand and a bowl in the other. I'm going to pour the contents of the jug into the bowl. Left rear. I'm holding a jug of water in one hand and a bowl in the other. I'm going to pour the contents of the jug into the bowl. And then right rear. I'm holding a jug of water in one hand and a bowl in the other. I'm going to pour the contents of the jug into the bowl. So, did you do what my family did when I played that audio and actually have to look behind you? And if you did, let me know in the comments down below. Was it when Jane spoke or was it when I went behind you to the right? There is, however, one problem with binaural reproduction. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replay the bits with Jane speaking and the bit where I go behind to the right, but this time through speakers. So switch your speakers on and we'll just replay those two bits. I'm holding a jug of water in one hand and a bowl in the other. I'm going to pour the contents of the jug into the bowl. Okay. Yeah. And then right rear. I'm holding a jug of water in one hand and a bowl in the other. I'm going to pour the contents of the jug into the bowl. The effect is totally lost, and this is because of crosstalk. Basically, my left ear can hear what's coming out of the right speaker as well as the left speaker. And binaural only works if the signals going to your ears are totally unique. I guess it's similar to going to a 3D film. Basically, the 3D glasses will filter out what the right eye shouldn't see and then what the left eye shouldn't see. And by taking them off, you'll, you basically see both uh, images interlaced. And that's kind of what crosstalk is with speakers. So uh, that is the, the, the one issue with binaural audio is, 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 is its um, 
reproduction has to be through a pair of headphones. The signals have to be unique in order for the brain to do all of that magical math. Hello, Will. How are you doing, mate? Hello. Yeah, very good. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about your um, your hearing. And yes. so you, you lost hearing in one of your ears, is that correct? Yeah. It's, I have what's called a clinically dead ear. And is that something you were born with? No, I was in a, I was in a, I was hit by a car. Oh, shit, man. We're well, glad that, that you're here, albeit with one <laughs> one ear. You're also an acoustics specialist as well, aren't you, Will? So you know about this stuff. I used to. <laughs> I, I, I remember some of it. Not all of it. Uh, but, but binaural recordings is all about ILDs and ITDs. And the minute I kind of learnt about these, I just wondered, well, what happens to people who only have hearing in one ear? Do you find it more difficult do you think to pinpoint where sounds are entirely you don't have any kind of left right interoral time information at all because obviously you don't get anything on the right but in my case yeah uh, because i can't i can't hear in my right um so i'm not able to deduce any time delay differences between sounds that are in space so i don't know like most people do, where anything's coming from. And the only tool that... I've got two tools I was thinking about that, that I can use with one ear. Um, and one is that when something gets closer to me, it gets louder. Yeah. That I can sense. Um, but, of course, I need a referent, reference. So it always needs to be moving to for a person with one ear. If, it's just, if you just blipped a sound anywhere and that was it, I wouldn't know where it, I wouldn't know how close to me or not that was because right. I don't have, a, again, a reference. If it's, if it's getting louder, I might assume that, that it's coming closer to me. Right. Uh, or indeed that someone is turning it up. But if it's, a, if it's a lion, then I'll assume it's coming towards me. If it's a speaker, then I might think that somebody's turning it up. And the other, the other tool that, um, that we have, which is, um, a bit more, I suppose, uh, scientific is uh, the filtering effect of the head. The, the head shadow, as they call it. My head starts to have a real effect on, on the sound that is hitting my eardrum. So, like, my nose, particularly if it's on the other side of my head, um, yeah. and it's got to go round my forehead, round my nose, round the kind of, you know, the, my ear flaps and things like that. That all serves to kind of filter the sound. And so, again... Only if it's moving. It's no good to me if it's static because I just I, I only then have one thing to go on. But if something is moving around me, and particularly if it's in a bandwidth of sound that I'm familiar with and I know the sound, then I may be able to determine, ah, I'm losing some high frequencies there as it moves away from me. So I could presume that my head is getting in the way and therefore it's moving towards my deaf side. What Will was talking about reminded me of a, uh, an interview I saw with Sammy Davis Jr., who'd lost the sight in one of his eyes um, through, I believe, a, a car accident much later in life. And he said it took him about a month to be able to simply pick up a glass of water because he totally had lost that spatial awareness created by two unique images coming together from two unique sources. So this is the idea behind binaural and our need for Dave in his full glory. genuinely thank the channel and uh, you guys for encouraging me to make these films because the experience of uh, just I don't know making this video has been really pretty profound something that really excites me about this is to understand the real difference between speakers and headphones and how with so many of us consuming so much on headphones where we go or that horrible thing that Apple says, the soundtrack to your life, but particularly with noise cancellation and all this kind of stuff. It does excite me that there is possibly 
a different way of thinking about creating music for headphones. Uh, my wife is recording an album at the moment and you know we were talking about the, the binaural experience and I said you know wouldn't it be nice if you could do kind of unplugged acoustic gigs for one with binaural recordings alternative recordings of your work and I I'm pretty close to getting started on my album and wonder if there is a, a binaural alter alternative that I could make. A very different experience altogether. So thanks again for your continued encouragement with me making these films because I have pretty much today just been speaking about stuff that uh, two weeks ago I, I understood little about and was somewhat sceptical over. But it's pretty profound, isn't it? I mean, what these things can do and what this thing can do with your ILDs and your ITDs and all of that stuff. So the piano, the binaural sample piano, how does it sound? Well, it sounds pretty awesome. So do subscribe if you haven't done already and ding that bell to be notified the next time I put a film up and I'll let you know when I'm going to make it available to all. Thanks as always for watching. One of those to Mr Martin Green for inspiring this film. See you again soon.